Howdy folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Test Roto channel. Everybody has their preferences in science fiction. Some like space opera, others think it's dumb. Some prefer lots of action, while others like something more cerebral, something with a lot of social commentary and so forth. That's like the Star Wars versus Star Trek controversy. But there's one concept that creates division Lots of division among sci-fi fans. Now, it's not wokeness. I wasn't going to say that. No, it is time travel. In the past, a few years back, I did one time travel video. And that's where I discuss 10 of my favorite time travel novels. In this one, I'm going to actually talk about time travel as a concept. And I'm not going to limit myself just to books. And I'm not going to rank them in any way, but more like talk about what it's all about. As I said, some people hate time travel. I know Mrs. Desperado is one of them. <laughs> she makes like two exceptions, two movies that she likes that involve it. But otherwise, she thinks it's dumb. As far as People in general, what are the problems with time travel? And I think there are several. First of all, it stretches credibility because time travel is obviously impossible. At least that's what we know and believe right now. It breaks the change of causality. It makes things happen in the wrong order or things happen and can be undone. And this removes the stakes in a lot of situations so it's non-serious like a dream and and that can be a problem with fiction because it's, it's less relatable in our lives it can create ridiculous paradoxes uh, such as the grandfather paradox if you go back and kill your own grandfather you will cease to exist so how can it have ever happened and like the multiverse idea which is the idea that there are different timelines of our own universe existing side by side, if only we could get to them. Like the multiverse idea, it can make for lazy writing. Because, for example, if you kill off a character or you want to undo something, you just go back and undo it or bring somebody in from another, another universe. Critical Drinker has ranted and raved about this and a lot of other people, <laughs> how they hate the multiverse trend. And, and time travel is a lot of the same thing. What is the appeal of time travel to the reader? Because despite all these problems, they keep writing them. Several, I think, are apparent. First of all, you get to visit a historical era. A lot of people would want to do that. Certainly, we steampunks would love to see Victorian London. It's probably smelly and inconvenient, but still it would be quite an adventure. Time travel can deal with existential issues, such as free will and fate and so on. It can challenge our preconception of our situation now and possible future. It can comment on our society by putting modern protagonists in historical situations and vice versa. Finally, it taps into the human need for wish fulfillment. A lot of us really would like to do over some aspects of our lives and time travel, at least conceptually, allows us to do that. So, given that time travel is impossible as far as we know it, uh, how is it achieved in science fiction in a believable way? Now, a lot of people like to talk about quantum theory, in which we have observed at the very microscopic level, uh, certain particles appear to move backwards in time occasionally. Now, this doesn't appear to go to the macroscopic world in any reasonable way, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, and that's one of the ways that we justify it. And so there's all been all sorts of ways to make a believable looking science happen and that can convince the reader, at least, for the suspension of disbelief. From way back, H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, in which there's this device with a spinning disc, and for some reason that angular momentum, that does something to distort time, and he could travel back and forth through uh, the timeline. Actually, only forward, <laughs> but then it can come back. And the other option, of course, is magic, because magic can do anything, right? 
The issue, though, is that magic in a story, to be interesting, it has to have limitations. Just that caveat there. But this is the premise behind, for example, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Or Gabaldon. I actually met her way back when and got a signed copy of her first book. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's why I had to read it, even though you know it's a romance. It's not my usual thing, but it gets this modern woman. It goes back to Scotland in like the 1700s, I think. And it's kind of her romantic adventure, finding her true love back there. And it's just a fun way to bring this modern person into a historical setting. You can have physics plus magic, which has been explored by Neil Stevenson and Nicole Galland in their fantastic uh, Rise and Fall of D.O.D.O., which I've talked about. And finally, there is Aliens. In the words of Arthur C. Clarke, any technology significantly advanced is indistinguishable from magic. And sometimes the aliens give us the power to travel through time. And there's a very significant uh, series called 1632, or the Ring of Fire series, in which that happens. Forms of time travel. The most common is physical. That is, you can physically go as a person forward in time or back in time and see and do things in the past or the future. There is also the concept of informational, in which you can get information from the future that allows you to maybe avert disaster or maybe uh, take advantage of some future knowledge, or you can send information back to the past, including your past self, which provides some interesting ideas for having your past self try to change your present. There's also a psychic time travel, which I can think of only one example, which is kind of weird, but so that you can actually kind of alter the past through psychic powers. You know, you don't always have the point of view being of the time traveler. Sometimes you have the visitor being a time traveler from the past or the future. How are the problems of paradox and causality handled in time travel stories? There are several variants. There are several possible scenarios. First and most obvious is the past is immutable. That is, if you go back to the past, you have absolute predestination. And if something does change, it's actually something was meant to happen. It's what they call a cause, a closed causal loop. Best example of that in story form is Behold the Man by Michael Moorcock, in which a Jewish guy who is obsessed with Jesus for various reasons, uh, he goes back to the time of Jesus and he becomes Jesus. <laughs> and so that is just fulfilling his destiny. There is the idea that the past is fragile and easily changed, and therefore time travel is very dangerous. That's most famously exemplified in The Sound of Thunder by Ray Bradbury. Uh, a time travel tourism agency allows you to go back and shoot a dinosaur. Uh, typically, a dinosaur was about to die anyway. But this guy steps on a butterfly while he's there, and that alters the present. That changes the present so that a fascist dictator has taken over. <laughs> now... I think that's part of where the term butterfly effect came from. There was a scientist named Lorenz who also talked about this in the 1960s, the idea that a butterfly's wings could affect the course of a typhoon you know, raging through the ocean somewhere. So I don't know if he was inspired by that or not. The third variant is that the past is changeable, but it's resilient. That is, it resists changes. If you go back in time for the purposes of research, you are unlikely to change the past because it wants to go back to the way it's supposed to be for whatever hand-wavy reason we say that. And so that's the premise behind Michael Crichton's timeline in which they are investigating medieval France. These modern people get caught up in the problems, but it's not going to affect the present because resiliency. The other alternative is if you want to change time, it's not easy. In The Rise and Fall of D.O.D.O. by Stevenson and Galland, I think I've mentioned that one, 
they are part of a government agency who wants to change time, but they have to go back several times in each incident in order for this change to take. And so if they want to uh, change the course of a man's life or something like that, or kill somebody, they'll have to kill him several times <laughs> because it's like the time splits into threads. It's hard to explain, but it seems plausible at the time. Fourth version is that, yes, the past is immutable, but it is changeable in the sense that it'll split off into another timeline. So if you do go back, you're now in a new universe and you can never go back to your own. This is exemplified in the 1632 series, which is a very extensive series of novels started by Eric Flint, but he opened up his universe to other writers. There's like 50 of them or more now that have been written. I've read like five. These Americans are sent back to uh, Germany in the Thirty Years' War. And they encounter all these problems and make all these changes and affect history. And it's kind of kind of interesting and crazy. Now, they can't affect their own timeline because this is a new universe. But at the same time, their knowledge of the future is very valuable to the other Europeans because they know how things are likely to go. And they allow people to, you know, get past possible problems and pitfalls. There are some other weird rules that crop up, and usually they're kind of silly. For example, you can't meet yourself <laughs> uh, because that violates the second law of thermodynamics. Actually, the whole thing violates the second law of thermodynamics. So it kind of, it's kind of arbitrary to say that a human being is that specific, you know, as opposed to any other form of matter. Second rule that I've noticed is that, for example, in DODO, you can only go back naked. Only your living tissue can go back. Nothing that's artificial, even including your fillings and your teeth disappear when you go back, which is kind of annoying. So, you know, this just kind of compl this kind of complicates the story. There's no real reason for it except for the magic system, except for the limitations of that that is involved. Now, what are the best adaptations? I'm going to go through a few that are examples of some of the phenomena that I've talked about, just as illustration, not as really a review. As far as short stories, I think A Sound of Thunder, that one by Bradbury that I mentioned, that really set the stage for a lot of modern time travel writing. Of course, the classics, we have to mention the best classics, The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, 1895, and Mark Twain's famous Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court, 1889. It's almost more like a dream, you know, what this what this in, ingenious American does back in the days of Knights of Old and so on. Best TV series? Well, of course, there's Doctor Who by the BBC. It's been around for like 60 years, although not consecutively, with a lot of good, silly fun. You know, uh, the Doctor is a Time Lord who travels around in this phone booth-like device his mission is to keep people from messing with the timeline, to fix problems and so on, and help people. And it was just good, silly fun until recent seasons when they tried to introduce identity politics and make it super serious. And that really kind of ruined it for a lot of people, me included. Best book series, 1632. That one I mentioned where the Americans are sent back by aliens, actually. That's how they explain it. Just another fun series about these Americans and how they relate to these uh, people from 300 years in their past. And it has a lot of commentary on our own society, including some of the outsiders, some of the locals from downtime, as they call it. They're observing what American society is like. Movies. Well, I'm going to mention Mrs. Desperado's two exceptions that she makes to the movies about time travel. The two she likes are Back to the Future, nice little wish fulfillment about changing your life, and Dying Darko, a sinister and dark thing about you know, destiny and sacrifice. Kind of creepy in places. Uh, the best, most plausible ones, I think DOD is the most plausible. To me, anyway, as complicated as it is, uh, you'd have to read it to see why I think 
the magic in here. They actually have a scientific reason for having magic work. Weirdest would be the butterfly effect, that movie with Ashton Kutcher, where he has this psychic ability to, to change the past. My favorite humor would be Time Bandits by Terry Gilliam and a Michael Palin from Monty Python, where these guys are running around trying to steal valuable objects from the past. Steampunk, my favorite time travel steampunk, The Anubis Gates by Tim Powers, uh, in which they go back to Regency era London and encounter a lot of weird people and situations. Most creative concept would be Steins Gate, that anime, where they can communicate with their own past. They try to avert a tragedy. And they're doing this by combining a microwave with a cell phone. <laughs> That's weird hacked up device they have. Uh, dumbest series would have to be uh, Time Tunnel, um, which was something we saw when we were kids as boomers. These guys are going back to this big tunnel and they fall into time and it's very silly. Of course, you can't forget Bullwinkle, where they had Sherman and Peabody going back in history. Now that was fun and pretty much instructive. That was a good educational thing, as dumb as it was. But of course, as many problems as time travel has, it is still pretty cool. And we can really do a lot of things with the story. Like I said, it can be a way to consider fate and human destiny and so on. It can comment on politics of the present and social conditions and it can speculate on the future and uh, ruminate on our past. It can be humorous, tragic, suspenseful, or even romantic. So I like time travel stories if they're done well. That's kind of a difficult challenge, but it can be done. This has been my show on time travel in fiction in general. What are its principles and what are its drawbacks and strengths? Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. Please also like and subscribe so we can continue to spread the steampunk word. Check out my books on Amazon. The links are in the description. For now, the Steampunk Desperado is saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.